Chess Pokututa is the Tenko. Ya Oscar. Diamond Select's Lord of the Rings Deluxe action figure line has been around for a few years now, but I've mainly overlooked it. I didn't like the look of the first few figures in the line, especially Legolas, but I eventually stumbled across Aragorn, I thought he looked like a pretty good figure, and recently I went back and picked up Frodo as well as Boromir, and the line seems to continuously improve with each release. Diamond really seems to listen to what fans are saying, and so with Sam having recently been released, I thought I'd check that out and see if that upward trajectory is continuing upward. He's looking good, seems to come with a ton of accessories, so let's take a look at the figure. So looking at just the base figure, I like what I'm seeing. A fair bit of detail when it comes to the creases in the clothes and things like that, which are accentuated by what looks like a paint wash pretty much throughout. It gets in those cracks, it really makes him have that uh, grimy look. You've got some detail on his little hobbit feet there, very nice. I like the uh, the paint work and the hair. Again, just gives it a lot of emphasis and volume in those cracks. The face itself, uh, not the best Sean Astin likeness. I see it, um, but it's not the face printing you'll see on a lot of import figures or even things like Marvel Legends. But it does the job. I see Sam. Looking a bit closer, there are paint details on things like the buttons, uh, the buckle down here, and the suspenders. A lot of work on the paint here, even on that little leather bit in these suspenders. I like that attention to detail. Sam comes with a bunch of accessories. We'll start with the costume accessories. He comes with an elven cloak, which is a, a big deal for these Diamond Select figures. The only other Fellowship member that's come with a cloak is Boromir. Despite the fact that a bunch of the prototypes have been shown with cloaks, Frodo, nor Aragorn, nor Legolas, nor Gimli came with elven cloaks of their own, and it's something fans have been asking for. I like the paint detail we get on this. There's some darker paint in the crevices there to give it some definition. Toward the bottom, we have some paint work to give it a dirt effect. I'm a big fan of that level of detail. There is a bit of paint on the elven brooch. Uh, the sculpt isn't terribly detailed, but there is silver paint on it there. Now, one gripe I have is that uh, <laughs> Sam's brooch actually faces to the right, whereas this one isn't. So, so a bit of a goof there, a bit of a gaff. Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Looking toward the back, the hood isn't terribly long, and the hood tends to drape really far down on these, but I think there's a reason behind that. And a bit of a closer look at the texture on the cloak. It's got a bit of a rough texture to it to emulate kind of that wool look that the cloaks have, so I really like that. Sam also comes with this shoulder bag, which is, again, looking good. Some darker paint details in the folds there. It's got a little sculpted um, drinking flask thing. And the strap is pretty rubbery, which is good, so you can get it on him fairly easy. And finally included is Sam's massive backpack. Uh, looking really good, as far as I'm concerned. The blanket at the top has some sculpted detail in there. You got all the pots and pans, this big uh, cauldron thing on the side, the elven rope. It's all there, all with their own paint details. You can see there's some dry brushing on the pans to give it that metallic look. Some sloppy paint apps here and there, you can see on this little bag. There's a bit of a brushed paint on there, accidentally. Overall, I really like the presentation here. None of these are removable, but I really don't mind. Um, I'm sure some people would have liked to see a removable frying pan, because he does use that as a weapon at some point in Fellowship, but eh, not a big deal. Now, something I was really worried about was getting both of these on him. None of the promotional pictures showed Sam wearing both the backpack and the elven cloak. There was a prototype shown of him wearing the backpack and all the promo images only showed the cloak and the shoulder bag. So I was thinking he wasn't going to be able to wear them both at the same time and that this cloak would just get donated to Frodo. But I'm very pleased to report Diamond has thought of a very elegant solution to this. So here we are with Sam with the cloak on as well as the shoulder bag. His head is very easy to pop off, no worries there. But how are we going to get the backpack on? Well, luckily, Diamond has made these straps removable at the bottom. They just pop out like that. And then you simply just loop them around his arms, like so. And he's wearing the backpack. And this is actually movie accurate because the backpack straps in the movie are also kind of impossible. They go over his shoulder, but it doesn't show how they connect to the backpack. I think there are holes in the cloak in the movie. Uh, these don't plug into anything, but they're just sturdy. Like it just stays on completely. It's not loose in any way. And I think it looks great. 
Now, if you look closely at the cape from the side, there's even a bit of indentation where the backpack does sit. They've designed it intentionally so that that backpack comfortably goes over the cloak. I really thought they were just gonna give us a cloak and a backpack and you could have one or the other. So the fact that he can wear the backpack and the cloak just really made me happy, I don't know why. So real quick, I just wanna re-examine this with everything on. Looks great, um, it's the full Sam look, mostly, but the packaging does label this as a Fellowship Sam, which I wanna bring into question because he is not seen wearing all of this in Fellowship. There is one scene in the extended edition where they see the elves going through the forest and Sam just has the suspenders on without the jacket or the vest. But this look, this is very much a Return of the King look. So I don't know how Diamond thought they could slip that past us hobbit heads, but there it is. So yeah, it's not really a, an actual gripe, but I will say there are other Sam looks they could have gone with. So in Fellowship, he has the jacket and the vest and this stuff underneath. At some point in Two Towers, he sheds the jacket, so he's mainly got the vest. And then in Return of the King, he loses the vest, so he's just got what we see here, the shirt, the suspenders, and stuff like that. I'm not actually picky when it comes to this, but I'm sure some people will think like, oh, this isn't going to fit with my Fellowship-looking Frodo, or, you know, having him next to Boromir doesn't make sense. I really don't mind. Sam also comes complete with his sword and scabbard. Now, this is a real sticking point for me and the other people who collect the line. This is another scabbard that will not uh, go on Sam. Like, there's no way of attaching this to Sam. And this is something we've seen a, a weird amount with Diamond and their Lord of the Rings line. They keep giving us scabbards that do not attach to the figures. There are a few other examples. Aragorn came with two swords. One of them is his original ranger sword with a scabbard that's attached to him. And he also came with Anduril, which has a scabbard that cannot go on him. I, I thought that was a bit weird, but at least his other scabbard is on him. There was uh, the Nazgul figure also had a scabbard that didn't attach. Boromir actually got two. We got this little rubbery dagger with a scabbard that doesn't actually fit the dagger inside of it, and the scabbard doesn't go on him at all. And then his regular sword also came with a scabbard that does not attach to him. So while Diamond is improving these figures very much, the scabbard thing is one thing that they haven't gotten past yet. Now you can remove the sword from the scabbard easy enough. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but out it comes. And this looks good to me. It's made of a very solid, rigid plastic, so it's not gonna bend on you like the Toybiz swords, which are always insanely bent, almost to like 90 degrees sometimes. This looks pretty good. There is some paint detail on the grip. You can see a bit of the silver shining through there, and the paint does go onto the, uh, the uh, hilt guard thing there. But this looks good to me. Um, maybe a little clean looking, because I know the Hobbit swords were pretty dinged up, but really not a big deal to me. Sam actually comes with a second sword. You get a glowing sting, which is a very nice inclusion. It allows you to have a bit of a Shelob's Lair display. He can hold both swords like he does in Kirith Ungol. Or you can give this one to Frodo, which is very nice. So here is the sting that came with Frodo versus the glowing version that comes with Sam. You can see a bit of that sculpt detail is missing in the glowing version, and I think that's just because of the extra paint. It kind of erases some of that sculpting. But they do appear to be the same sculpt. Now this doesn't fit in the scabbard, um, which is okay. It's just a little thicker, I think. And it also doesn't fit in Frodo's scabbard. I think the paint just makes it a little too thick. It goes in about that far, and I don't want to push it any further. I think I actually have a bit of paint rub on the sides from where I was trying to force that in. Uh, really not a big deal, though. Sam also comes with this little salt box, the finest salt in the Shire. I believe you see this in a Two Towers extended cut scene from very early in the movie. Nice little inclusion. I don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe if we get pieces for a campfire diorama set. I could use it there, but I'll, I'm not going to complain about it. It's a nice little inclusion. And we also have some interchangeable hands. So along with these empty hands, we get two sword holding hands, as well as a fifth hand holding the file of Galadriel. They all have really nice paint detail. Again, look a little grimy. And the file itself has some paint on it too. Looks to be the same sculpt as the file that came with Frodo just with some white paint to emulate the file glowing. And it's nice to have one that's sculpted in. Frodo could hold this in his offhand, but this one is just more secure. You're not gonna lose it as easily. So I'm a fan of this inclusion. 
Now, a few of these accessories are applicable to Frodo. I'm gonna take you through and show you which ones Frodo can actually make use of. So Frodo can hold Sting. You can display him with the, the glowing Sting there. But for the Light of Galadriel, the pin is just longer on Sam's hands than for Frodo. So you're just gonna have to have him holding the uh, original file he came with. For the cloak, I actually was able to wrestle it onto Frodo. His head does pop off, just not as easy as Sam's. And at first it looked like his uh, hobbit mullet was getting in the way and wasn't letting his head rise up. But I did get it in place. I actually put Frodo's head on backwards and rotated it, and he was able to wear the cloak. So that's an option for you if you do want that cloak on Frodo instead. We'll take a look at articulation. Sam's head moves this far up. I think it's hindered by the hair sculpt. Looks down, pretty good amount. A bit of pivot in the head there. The shoulders go up that far. Uh, so a bit of stiffness in the joints, especially when I move this one around, you'll hear it. Listen to that. This one isn't as bad. But there's a, yeah, there's a bit of that creaky noise you get. Single joint on the elbow, it moves, I'd say just under 90 degrees. And then you can rotate that within there. I've got two different hands on them here just to demonstrate. So this is one of the sword holding hands. It has the up and down articulation. So you can, you can pivot it and have him pointing the sword like that. I will say when I put this on just now, it, it's suddenly a very loose fit. I don't think it'll be an issue with holding the sword, but something to note. It might be that some of the paint has come off the pin. Then with the regular hands, the pin is oriented in the side to side way, so it can move freely like that. And there's a lot of motion on these because you can see the pin goes pretty deep into the hand. Some people might take issue with that. I like it just because it provides that much more range of motion. We have a joint in the torso that doesn't have a very wide range of motion. It goes that far forward and that far back. So that, that's what you're working with. A tiny bit of side to side. Mainly it just rotates. I, I, that might be the purpose of it, it just has a bit of rotation for him. The legs, I'm very surprised at the range. They go this far forward, not bad, but side to side is wild. And it's just the regular pin you see on most figures of this scale, but for some reason they've made it in such a way that it's extremely, <laughs> it can go extremely wide. The knee is just a single joint, goes up about that much. I'm not too fussed about that with knees in general, except if it's like a Spider-Man or something like that. I don't really need the double jointed knee. No rotation at the shin there, but that's okay because this rotates at the knee. And his little hobbit feet have a good range of motion. They go that far back, decent amount forward, and the side to side rocker is very good as well. One thing with the hands I forgot to mention is that these are slathered in paint, including the pins themselves. Um, the pin was very stiff to move right out of the package to the point where I was a little afraid they would snap off. So I heated all the hands up in hot water and it's a little, a little better now. Still a little, little stiff. Um, and once I do move them, you can see the exposed plastic there with no paint. But as they are, I think the paint does constrict articulation. Once I heated them up, they are easy to move, especially once they're actually pinned into the wrists. But um, something to keep in mind. Now for a size comparison, here is Sam next to the other Fellowship members I've collected so far. I'm liking the scale between these, no complaints there. And since Diamond Select makes figures in the 7 inch scale, these aren't going to scale well with things like SH Fig Arts, Marvel Legends, that kind of thing. They scale better with NECA's offerings because NECA makes stuff in generally the same scale. So that is Diamond Select's new Samwise from the Lord of the Rings line. It's taken me a while to warm to this line. But it's really won me over. Like I said, they've been improving each figure release by release. And Samwise here is a testament to that. He's a smaller figure, he's a hobbit, but he comes packed with accessories to make up for it. He's got a ton of display options. You can have him um, without the backpack and cloak. He's got a few weapons you can interchange. Having two sets of interchangeable hands and then the bonus 
with the file is great. I do wish that scabbard was attached to his belt. That's one thing that Diamond hasn't quite worked out yet. But I think Samwise, from what I've seen, is the best in the line so far. Like I said, there are issues they need to iron out. The scabbards need to be fixed. I think their solicitation pictures are kind of flawed in that we don't know what accessories these figures are going to come with until they release. Sam's pre-order pictures just show the cloak and the shoulder bag. So like I said, I didn't know if he'd be able to wear the backpack as well. We didn't know what hands he was going to come with, what swords he was going to come with. They weren't listed under the pre-order. They've now updated it to list those after he's been released. But generally with these, when they go up for pre-order, we don't know exactly what they're coming with. This is the case with Marion Pippin, who just went up for pre-order. They aren't shown with any accessories and we don't know exactly what they're going to come with. And if you look on Amazon for Legolas or Aragorn, you're going to see a Legolas with double jointed arms, an Aragorn with a quiver on his back, which are actually both inaccurate now. So there are some kinks to work out, but I think they've made really good progress, and this Sam release is great. I think it's the definitive Sam action figure. I think it outshines any of the Toy Biz releases, and I do love that line, that's what I grew up with, but they were hampered by weird sculpts, these weird action features on a lot of them. Whereas this Diamond Select figure has so many different options and accessories. The line has progressed to the point where you're almost able to finish the Fellowship once Mary and Pippin come out. So if you're thinking of jumping in, I would recommend it. Just do a bit of research into the older ones. Look at their flaws and see if it's something you're able to overlook. I think I am going to go back and pick up Gimli. I'm going to get Gandalf the White once he comes out. He's looking great. He'll be my display Gandalf. And I'm hoping they redo Legolas. I think the Legolas is a little too flawed for me to get. He doesn't come with his knives, he doesn't have a cloak, he has single jointed elbows, and his skin was like a bubblegum pink color. They did alleviate the knife issue with their deluxe golem, which came with Legolas's knives, some extra arrows, and an axe for Gimli. But I'm really holding out for a new Legolas. I'm hoping they do Helm's Deep Legolas with the shoulder armor, maybe a Rohan sword, and all the other accessories he should come with. And I'm excited to see them flesh out the line further. I'd love a Black Gate Aragorn, maybe a Faramir, some more villains like a Gothmog, Witch King, maybe a Mouth of Sauron, and Zack from Diamond Select has teased that they're maybe gonna be doing some The Hobbit figures. I'll for sure pick up Bilbo if they make him. Outside of that, uh, I don't know about The Hobbit stuff, but I am now invested in this line. I'm excited to see what else they come out with. Uh, Sam was released alongside Saruman, who I'm also looking forward to very much. I'm going to be reviewing him soon. He comes with some extra wizard sleeves because the long draping sleeves were issues with the Nazgul and Gandalf. So looks like they've addressed that with Saruman. Keep an eye out for that review coming up. And let me know what you think of the line. Have you picked up any figures from this line? Are there any you're looking forward to? How do you think it holds up to Toy Biz's line from back in the day? And as always, thank you for watching.